Today's guest has a voice that can only be described as a gift from God. He is one of the most celebrated young singers, Josh Groban. Since his astonishing debut three years ago, he has stayed in the top 40 charts over a year. At the age of 23, he is already an internationally renowned singer. Josh Groban is a true phenomenon, a classically trained singer who has conquered the pop charts. Josh creates his unique sound by mixing pop music with classical and opera. He is a genius at crossing musical boundaries, creating new fans in each style. At the age of 21, his debut album sold over 5 million copies. Today, Josh shares the stage with orchestras and performs worldwide. His latest album, Closer, reached number one on the charts and includes songs co-written by Josh himself. These days, Josh follows an intense schedule of touring and recording. We were fortunate that he found the time to stop by for a visit. Josh, thank you so much for coming to my home. Thank you for having me. It's a beautiful place. Josh, I know you're terribly busy, and you're again on tour this year. This is the second tour of the year. How do you like being on tour? When you're on the road, it's, you know, it's very disciplined, and you have to sing 18 songs every night. And, but it's, it's for me, so far, it's been more fun than being at home, feeling that energy every night. <laughs> and um, I, I absolutely love it and just seeing who's in the crowd and being able to feel mm -hmm. uh, for myself, like because of the singing every night, I feel like I'm getting stronger. And uh, it's just overall uh, an amazing adventure. So this time, how many, how long, how many cities, how many concerts? Probably more like 70. Overall, probably about four and a half, four and a half months. So, so four uh, and a half months, you'll yeah. be away from your family, I know. Uh, really, <laughs> and you'll be on the road living on a bus. I mean, I read about your bus. Sure, by the way. it's a very nice bus. Uh, you know, we stop obviously at hotels when we get to each city, but, but it is, it's, it's seeing the world through a hotel window sometimes, and, mm -hmm. uh, and you're, you're waking up in a new city every day. And, um, and part, part of that can be very tiring, but, but mostly it's just very exciting. What's up, Big Daddy? I'm reporting for duty. And I don't mean duty, I mean duty. The tour bus definitely helps you get into that mentality. You're kind of in a time capsule and you're, you're, you're finishing, you're, you're saying thank you, good night, and you're jumping and, and the show's over and then um, you're on the bus. You don't really know how, for how long you're gonna be on the bus, you just know that you're on the bus and it's time to start a movie or have dinner or get into bed and go to sleep. And when you wake up, you don't really know how long you've been driving for, but you know that you're in a new city. And that's exciting. That's, there's something comforting about that. There's something, uh, very routine about, about the travel and the tour bus. I'm already exhausted, depleted, deflated, excited, retarded. And travel to me has just been such a blessing. And so I, to be able to, to be able to, you know, take a road trip around the, around the country and around the world uh, has been one of the major perks of the tour for sure. Um, good show, good audience, a little rain, a little, uh, little sweat. Um, off to um, Tyson's Corner, Virginia, to rest and have another day off. You know, a lot of people think that touring is really glamorous and you're on stage with the lights and everything. It isn't really always so, is no, it? Not at all. No, that's very true. Once you get on stage, the energy hits you and you wind up finding it anyway. But. Um, but it is, it is a lot of hard work, you know, there's like, no, yeah. no parties, no, you know, no, no parties, <laughs> no parties, no, no, you know, you gotta, everything has to be concentrated on the voice because um, if that doesn't hold up, then, you know, you've, you've got to cancel and you should never cancel. So yeah, how do you prepare yourself on, on the, for those two hours? You know, do you, um, uh, do you vocalize? Uh, a lot of things, uh, everything from making sure you get enough sleep, like I, 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 I'm not very good at getting to sleep early. I'm I stay up all night. I especially if I've had a show, I'm very high from the show, and uh, 
it's very hard for me to, to wind down. So I'll be up till maybe 3, 4 in the morning. And, but then I have to make sure that I can sleep for most of the day because the show's at 8. So, so I'll wake up at 1 o'clock you know, and, and, and just make sure I have my 8 or 9 hours. That's very, very important. Um, and then also worry, you know, what I eat so that, that you know, my, I'm not stick to my stomach when I'm on stage yes. you know, and not, not eating 2 to 3 hours before the show. Um, and then, of course, you know, all the vocal exercises. So, yeah, there's a whole routine that you go through before every show to get, your, get yourself ready. Do you still get frightened before you go on the stage? Sure, yeah, oh yeah. There's a lot of nerves. I mean, it's, um, but it's, it, it has turned from kind of a, an inexperienced um, nervousness and, and, and fright to a kind of a, an excited energy now, which is better. Um, so it's a control kind It's of more controlled, energy. yeah. And, and um, I found ways to kind of get myself for the first couple songs to find the groove and to get, to get the nerves down a little bit. You know, you're warming up in your room, it's sounding good out there, but you know, you never know. Some nights I'm absolutely feeling like crap backstage. I, I have got like sniffles or I feel tired from the night before or I've got a little bit of a sore throat coming on. I just, you know, so many things can make me neurotic backstage and make me a crazy person. Call the house lights? Lights, house lights. Are house lights. House. Okay, then go. Band's ready. When you're walking to the stage with everybody and you put in your earpieces and you know, the rumble starts at the beginning of the show and you know, right, guys, huddling with the band and we're, we're giving ourselves a pep talk and we're hearing the crowd, you know, as soon as they say, you know, house lights down and the lights go out and the crowd goes nuts. Um, you know, it's, uh, they, don't, they don't show you that in theater school, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, How do you describe your music? It's a bit of a mix, and um, you know, I always tend to, to to let the listener kind of decide what it is, and in that way, you know, it's it's been great to walk into a music store, and find it in all different sections of the music store. But you know, if I were to describe it myself, I would say that it's um, a pop pop music, but a different kind of pop music. You know, I think that it definitely has classical influences, oh yes, and world music influences, um, but uh, but I think that you know, pop music nowadays is so finely formatted that um, I would rather kind of challenge that and say that it's pop music that does this rather than you know classical crossover that does another one of these you know yeah. so um, now your first uh, album called Josh Groban yes uh, easy. You, you sold <laughs> you sold like five million copies mm -hmm. and uh, you just launched uh, closer mm -hmm. and now how many copies have you sold so far uh, it's almost around four million now wow. so it's been out uh, it's been out about eight months now so it's uh, it's been um, it's been really thrilling to see to see the success of the second album because you always think, you know, well the first one did well, you know, that was just a new thing and it was just a fad, you know, but but it's been it's been really great, especially since I felt like I had much more of a creative hand in the making of the second album uh, to see that people are really enjoying it. So it's it's fun. 